I'm going to share my screen. Uh, share. There we go. So tonight we talk about module six, which are lists and dictionaries. Oh, already got somebody in the chat. Okay. Pretty stressed out at the moment. Yes. I, I can imagine at this point in the in the course, a lot of people are stressed out because there's a lot of new stuff that you have learned and you're about to have to put it all together. And that putting it all together can be very, very stressful. It can be time consuming and it, it can just be aggravating. And we can go through a couple of strategies to help you through that. Um, some of it is how to break the problem down. And we can do that um, a little bit later on in the class. Now, uh, what we're going to talk about tonight does, in fact, relate to your, um, your project. Because you're going to need to have a dictionary and you're going to need to have a list at, in your project, your mapping for your rooms and where they move and what the next room is and things like that is a dictionary. And what the game player collects when they go to each room is a list. So you're going to need to know this information to apply it to your game. So let's start talking about the principles of lists and dictionaries. and. We can talk about how, how they relate, how they work, and then potentially how they relate to your, to your game and how they relate to Project 6. If you want me to do, you know, we may go over a little time, but if you want to go look at the rubric for the project that's due and uh, for the, the container project that's due, let me know. So lists and dictionaries, what are they? They are what are called containers, okay? And that's just a term that says they hold a lot of data. Um, up until now, except for strings, we've, we've held a single value in a variable. We've held the number one. We've held, you know, 10.5. And a string can be, a string is in fact a list. It's a special list. So we can only do so much with it. What we're moving into this week is the, bil the ability to, to, sorry, what we're moving into this week is the ability to create, modify, delete, and actually the acronym is CRUD, create, read, update, and delete, our own containers. We can define a container. We can decide what a container should be, how much stuff it should hold and how we access that container. And there are two basic containers in Python. There's a list and there's a dictionary. A list, we've already looked at before. A list is just like we, if you, if you understood how to do strings, that a string is a list, then you pretty much understand the, the basics of a list. A list is a series of values. And each of those values has an index that you can use to get to a value in the list. And you can give it a name, you can assign it to a variable with a name, and you can pass it around like a variable, and you can do all kinds of stuff with it. So let's just review, uh, yes, okay. Okay, it's all about stress. Welcome to the world of code. Kind of yes. Um, can you hear me, James? Okay. Um, by the way, I am recording this as well. Um, so is there anybody who is on their computer that can hear me through their computer? Okay, good. Thank you, James. 
Cool. So let's just go back through the basics of a list. Uh, so let me create a new project. Sorry, I should have done this before we started. Uh, six. I have to figure that out one day. Okay. So we're just going to go through and talk about a simple list just to review the basics of what we have talked about so far. Uh, here. So there we go. I apologize, I should have done this before the class started. Good, I'm glad it's working for everyone. So um, we're just going to do a simple list. And I'm just going to say simple is my list name. Lists have open and closed square brackets. That is how Python knows that there is a list, okay? And what I've just created is an empty list. Actually, we'll call it empty. So if I run this, whoops. If I run this, you'll just see that I get the open and close square brackets because there's nothing in it. So now if I create a list, I can populate it with anything that's a valid value in Python. Doesn't matter. Lists do not have to be of the same type. So I can have a string, an integer, a float, or a boolean. All the types in Python. I can also have other lists. Okay, and I can evaluate the list in different ways. I can use, when we were talking about for loops, we had the in operator for for loop. So I can go through a list and I can say for item, and item is just a variable name. It could just as easily have been the letter X. In simple. print item. Whoops, my bad. Nope. There we go. The right kind of parentheses. So I can do all kinds of things. And we've I, I'm going through this quickly because we've done this once before. So I'm just trying to kind of uh, kind of go over this quickly and then we'll move into the new stuff. So we know that square brackets are, uh, are telling Python, hey, I created a list. I can print the list. I can have, this is just an empty list. I can create a list like this by just adding items to it. So this is a, a populated list. I can print it again. And I can use the in operator provided by Python when using a for loop, not a while loop, but a for loop to get at the items in a list. So this is stuff we have previously done. And we know that each item in a list has an index. So I could use the for item in or I could use for counter in range, sorry, zero comma len, simple, 
print simple, sorry, M-P-L-E. Uh, format counter simple um, counter. So this is just another way, but this also, this last for loop is going to illustrate the fact that each value that is stored in a list can be got to, gotten to by its associated index. So here we have simple 0 is Lisa, simple 1 is 29, simple 2 is 10, and simple 3 is true. Now again, all list indexes start at 0. It's something that we had to go through with strings, and it's the exact same thing here. Okay, there's no difference. The only difference between a list and a string, well, there's two differences. The way we define it, we use a quote for strings. We use an open and square and close square bracket for a list and the fact that a string is immutable. You cannot change a string. You can create a new string from an existing string that's different, but you can't change it. A list you get to change as, as much as you want. You can change it however you need. So we have accessing the list elements. You have integers, sorry, you have indexes. And this is going to become important when we talk about dictionaries because it's a difference from what dictionaries have. So here are some common list operators. I can create a list. I can get at an element in the list using the index. I can get a sublist from a list by using start and end. Um, this is very handy if you, if you know that, you know, if you find one element in the list and then you want to go 10 after that element or something, it's very handy. Um, and you can delete an element in the list. So this, uh, so these are all op options that you have in Python. For instance, del my list of i deletes an element, sorry, deletes an element from the list. And that, that's very handy if you want to shorten the list. So you can create, read, and update, and delete. You can, what they call in-place modification. So I can decide that I want to change 29 to a different number. So I can say if a simple of counter is 29, I'm going to change simple of counter to 39. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to print it again. And you'll see that it will have changed. So this is how to modify an element in, in line in the list. All I'm doing is I'm pulling out one value and I'm putting in another. So if I print simple, you'll see that I will have modified the list. Okay, so I have Lisa 39, 10, and true. So what I basically did is I took 29 here and then I just swapped 39 for it. So that means the list is mutable, i.e. I can change any element in the list to anything I want. I can change it to another list. So uh, let's see. Um, this is just modifying a list. It's just what I told what I showed you to do. Somebody inputs a list. Remember, when you are inputting into Python, everything is 
a string. And you, if you have spaces or some other delimiter separating your values, you can then split them into a, a list. And so I will just, well, do you guys need me to show you an example of that? I think you probably don't, but let me know. And if so, then I'll create a real simple example. Okay. So what we have is, I'll just create a new file. Come on. There we go. Um, input to list. So I'm just going to have um, val equals input. Input. So I'm going to input value separated by spaces. And then just to show it, I'm going to print val. And then I'm going to say my list is going to be val.split. And what that will do is it's going to split it into a list. So I'm going to debug this. I'm going to put a little breakpoint right there. I'm going to set this as my configured And so uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to debug this so that we can watch it go through line by line. So I'm going to go to the console, and right now I'm going to step over line number two. So what it's doing right now is um, it's waiting. Python is waiting for me to enter something. So I'm going to say enter... Um, Must be 42. Okay, so I just entered this is a number and the number 42. So I have now stepped to line 3 in PyCharm and I'm going to step over it. It's going to print this is a number 42 because that's exactly what I put in. And val you will see if I go to the debugger, val is a string because it tells me right here in PyCharm and this is the contents of the string. Now, I'm about to create a variable called myList in Python because as soon as Python executes this line of code, that variable will be created and it will be reflected down here in the variable section. So when I step over that, I'm creating a value called myList. There are five elements in the list. It will tell you what elements are in that list. Now, Notice one thing here. I entered the number 42, but right now Python sees 42 as a string because uh, the input statement for Python believes that everything is a string. Anytime you input information to Python from the console, which is what we're doing here, and what you do in Zybooks when you enter in your data to run on your labs, it's always going to be a string. That has nothing to do with Zybooks. That has nothing to do with PyCharm. That is simply how Python is built. And so I can now print my list. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do our for loop again. So I'm going to say for item in my list. And then I'm going to print Uh, okay, so I'm going to print. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Let's just say I don't want 42 to be a string. I want it to be an integer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if item is 42, then... How do I change it now? Well, that's a good question. 
So I'm not going to do it like this. I'm going to do it for counter in range 0 to the length of the list. So now I can say if my list, whoops, uh, oops, sorry, 42, oh, my goodness, I apologize. If counter of my list is 42, then I'm going to say my list of counter is going to equal the number 42, because I want it to be a number. And then when I'm done, I'm going to print my list. Okay? So if I go ahead and run this, I'm going to say this is a number, and I'm going to put in 42. And what you will see is the 42 here is in quotes, and the 42 there is not in quotes. Is this what you were hoping to see, Gabriel, or is there another more specific question? Okay. Cool. Glad. All right. So what can I do to a list? Well, Python gives us a whole lot of functions that you can do to a list. In fact, if you Google Python list, what you will find is a whole lot of great things. W Three Schools has lots of great stuff. Python.org also has lots of wonderful stuff. You can go out here. They have all kinds of examples um, that tell you how to use lists differently. They hear that you know you have an append and extend. Here are all the functions you can do with a list. Clear removes every single item from a list. You don't have to go through and delete. It just does it. Index. Um, so it just um, it gives you the, the values from one index to another. Count returns the number of items that appear of items of X that appear in a list. So let's say you have a, a list of strings and you need to know how many times a word appears in that list, you're going to want to use the count function and I think there's a lab about that. You can copy a list. So there's all kinds of things that Python gives you to just modify a list. Um, you can remove an index by index. You can remove by value. You can pop which just means you're popping the last item off the list, so you're deleting it. Um, and that's very handy if you're using it like a stack. You can sort a list, another very, very handy function. Whenever you have to sort a list, unless there's a really good reason that, you, that, that the p normal Python sort doesn't work, always use Python sort. It will always be faster than anything you can write unless there is some very specific technical or scientific reason why you don't want to, why you, should, why you don't think you should use that. Um, so reverse sort of a list. Sort short names in reverse alph alphabetical order. So this one just makes a liar out of me. So instead of sorting, and some teachers are going to get mad, but so here, so if, and what I'm doing is I'm just showing you how to program smartly because this is something that I do in my daily life. So if you're in my class and I find out you're doing this, I don't have a problem with it. I think Google is very helpful. And one of the things 
I just learned, or I just helped you learn, is this little summary thing. Use sort reverse equal to to reverse the default sort order. So if we're looking at this, I can do several things. I can try and figure out how to do a reverse sort, or I can use the sort function with reverse equal true. So, in fact, let's see what it has here. There's sort right here. So when you're looking, when you're starting to get into some of the more complex stuff, it's okay to go out and Google it. It will make your life easier. And I'm a professional programmer. I do this all day, every day. There, I, there are a lot of things out in the computer world that I don't know about, so I go out and I Google them. So iterating over a list. I just showed you two different ways to iterate over a list. In is an operator provided by Python that is used in conjunction with a for loop to simply go through each element of the list. Um, let's see. Built-in functions to iterate over lists, they're very easy. Some, min, max, I think you have to do one with either a min or a max. Um, so remember, those are available. Use them. Let's see. Um, some extra credit. Well, we, we've already learned about so you're getting some information in, and then they want you to do a sum. Well, we've already learned that there's a sum function, so my suggestion would be to use that. List games. Um, this is just about iterating through a list. Nested lists. Okay, nested lists can seem to um, confuse students who are new to collections. But really, you're just putting a list inside of a list. So let's do this. Let's just go to, oops, come on. I don't know what's wrong with me tonight. There we go. Nested list. So I'm going to create a nested list. Nested is going to be open, close, and then I'm going to create my first list. Yes. Question 6.3.3 about separating the values with characters. Okay, we can go back and look at that real quick. 6.4, 6.3.3. Where is that? 6.3.1.1. Okay. Hourly temperature reporting. Okay. Um, hourly temperature reporting. Write a loop to print all elements in hour hourly temperature. Separate elements with a dash uh, and greater than sign surrounded by spaces. So the sample output would be that. Well, we know that we can iterate over the list. We can print the elements of, of that list. We can end each print statement differently than a new line. And we can add a character. So let's do this challenge really quick. OK, so we'll just, OK, let's do Challenge 633. Okay, so let's just copy what they have here. Ah, okay. So what you end up with is another uh, dash greater than here at the end. Okay, 
So all you have to do then is you test whether or not it's the last element in the list or if there is another element in the list. So here you can, we have a choice. We can do for element in and then do the print or we can do for counter in range zero comma len. And if so, we can always test whether or not we're at the last character. And if we are at the last character, then you simply don't, then what you simply do is have a different print statement. Okay? Does that make sense? Let me show you real quick. Okay, just copy that. Okay, we'll just do this real quick. So basically what they want is you're getting hourly temperature. So we're going to have this list called hourly temperature. And I can do four, I can do, I can do element in, or I can do... Um, or I can do counter. So I'm going to do this. Counter in range zero I'm pretty sure it's got to be the counter. I haven't looked at the the solution lately but I'm pretty sure it's got to be the counter. Uh, Len hourly temperature. I'm going to say if counter is the same as len of hourly temperature minus one print. Oh, how do they want? I'm just going to print the hourly temperature. Uh, hourly temperature of counter. Otherwise, print hourly temperature of counter. Going to do space, space, uh, hold on, yeah, Oops. okay. So let's see what happens. See if my brain's functioning properly tonight. I was writing Java all day, so if I start typing Java, please forgive me. All right, so let's see what happens. What did they want us to input? They wanted us to input 90, 92, 94, and 95. Okay. So I'm going to input 90, 92, 94, and 95. And I get, oops, wait a minute, I have an extra quote there. So let's do that again. But that's pretty much what you need to do. 90, 92, 94, 95. So basically, this is what you have to do to not have that extra character at the end. Does that make sense? I'm going to assume that makes sense, and we're going to go on to, okay, no problem. So we're going to go on to nested lists. Nested lists are very important. If you've ever used 
um, a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet. What you're dealing with is essentially a matrix. How you create a matrix in a program is a nested list. So a nested list is just a list that contains other lists. So I'm just going to have mine right now of numbers because it's easy to type in. So what I have created is a, is a variable called nested. Nested is a list. That list happens to contain other lists. So how do I do anything with these nested lists? Well, let's start off by just doing something we already know. Well, I'm going to do four. Actually, I'm going to call it row. Row in nested. And I'm going to print row. So let's see what happens. So I'm just going to print this, and what you will see is when I when I printed row, I just got a single list, even though nested has three lists in it. And that's because the value for row is just a list. So let me step through this in the debugger and hopefully it will be clear. So I created something called nested and I nested contains three lists. I've got a, val, a variable row. Row is looking for values in nested starting with nested at the zero index. And when I print row, it gives me one, two, three. And then if I step over it, row becomes four, five, six. So what I'm seeing here is that each value in the in nested is in fact another list. And that's completely okay. So let me finish this out. So how do I get to the stuff inside those lists? Well, there's a couple of different ways. First, I can do another for loop. So I can say for cell in row, and I can print cell. So if I run this, I'll have, this is my row. In fact, let me do this so that it's easier to read. Row. So this is easier to read if I do it like this. So row 1 is 1, 2, 3. Cell 1 is 1. Cell, the next cell is 2. The next cell is 3. So that's one way to get at information in a nested loop. Here's the next way. So for right now, I'm just going to comment this out. And I'm going to do this differently. I'm going to say for outer in range so why do I keep typing O for a zero tonight? In lane nested. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for inner in range, comma, len of outer. Then I'm going to say I'm going to print
cell is So this is a new notation that we have, right? I've still got the exact same list nested because it's a list of lists. So now what I'm doing is I'm doing nested loops. Because I have nested lists, I'm going to do nested loops to get at the information. So I'm going to just create a variable called outer. This could have been x. It could have been i. It's just a variable. And I'm going to say in range of the length of nested. So we know nested has three elements. It's got the first element, which will be at the zero index, is a list containing one, two, three. The second value is would be at the number one index, and it contains a list, which contains four, five, six. And then the third element, which is at index 2, contains another list with values 7, 8, and 9. And so another way to get at that information, and one that allows you to really pinpoint things and change them, is using your for loop with the range. So for some variable name in this range. So I'm going to run this now, oh, and I got an error, type int, inner in range 0, len outer. Oh, my, oh, my, my, my bad, nested of outer. I apologize for being, for being wrong. So what I gave it was a number, what it needed was a list. So instead of outer, which is a number, I needed to give it nested of outer, which is in fact the value. So my apologies. So when I run it, I get cell, oops, my bad, cell, all right, nested. And so then I will do uh, nested of outer inner. That'll make it a little more reasonable. Okay, so nested of zero zero is one. Put a space there. So nested of zero zero is one. Nested of zero one is two. Nested of zero two is three. So what we're seeing here is how to get at information inside a nested list. So you have, we're, we're nested too deep. So we have an outer or a row wise and an inner or a cell. And this is how you get at them. Because I have an outer list and an inner list, I have to always have the first, the outer number first. So zero gets me to this right here. That list is nested of zero. The second number gets me to the individual item in the second in the inner list. So zero of zero is this one right there. So you go along down the line using that same nomenclature to get at the data in a nested list. I know I'm going to run over tonight, and I apologize. Um, so this is what they call a multidimensional data structure. They're talking here about tic-tac-toe. But basically, if you've ever used a spreadsheet, you've used a nested list. And you can nest lists as many times as you want. Um, my head would hurt. But you, you can nest them as many, many times as you want. So, if you guys want me to do any of the challenges, let me know. I'm going to keep on going because I know I'm going to run over. So, you can, uh, you can use slice notation to slice a list. This is the same way with slicing strings. So, you can create one list 
from another list by simply saying start at index 0, go to index 2. Start at index 5, go to index 7. However you want to use it. And it's, it's very handy notation to be able to use that. Um, these are common list slicing operations. They're pretty self-explanatory. If you understood it from the strings, it's pretty much the same. Loops to modify list. So we've already seen how to loop through a list using for some variable in range. We've actually already seen how to modify that value. We did it a little bit ago when we changed it from the, num from the string 42 to the number 42. And you can test by the position or by the value when you want to change something. Um, let's see. OK, so the it's list comprehension. Uh, they're basically shorthand notations for iterating over lists. I don't tend to use them partially because I simply don't find them easy to read. But this is, this is not anything to do with Python. This is my particular way I like to code. They are very valid. I have colleagues who use them and, and think they're the best thing. They do shorten your code, but I just think that they make it a little bit more difficult to read. But that's all this is. This is a shorthand notation for other things you have already learned to do. So basically what this is doing is it's saying, you know, list plus five is, you know, i plus five for i in my list. And all of this, this i and this i are the same. So basically for every element in the list, make this change. That's all you want to do. And again, it's a very handy notation. It's, you know, everything on a single line. And here are some very, very uh, good examples of how to do it and why you would want, well, not why, but how to do it. And I think you have a challenge that you have to use for that. Sorting lists. List sort function is spectacular. It is something you will want to keep in your back pocket. And unless there's some strange reason, always use the sort function. Sort, we've already looked here at sorting. Python has some good information about it. Google has some good information. Um, to do the reverse sort, you would want to say reverse equal true. Um, command line arguments. So I won't spend much time going this, but if you are writing a Python program like the one for your um, for your program, you can take in arguments from the command line, not from the console, but from the command line. The arguments that you take in from the command line go into a special list. The list is called sys.argv, okay? And, and it is a list. So, but your program has to be written so that you can handle that particular stuff. This is just an introduction. You're not going to do anything with this in this class. All of the inputs you are taking externally are going to be through the input command. So this is just something for you to know. These are just some additional practice engineering examples. Um, varied amount of input data. Statistics are often calculated, varying amounts of input data, okay. Write a program that takes any number of integers as an input and outputs the average and the max. Well, let's see what we have here. Do we have a max? So uh, let's see. P 
Python list max. Looks like there is a max and a min function for Python. So this would be something you could do. And let's say, average of a list looks like you will probably have to go through and add everything up and do the average yourself. But this isn't difficult. This is using the max function and then just doing a four in and adding everything up and then dividing by the number, by the length. So this should be pretty straightforward. Filter and sort a list. So write a program that guesses lists of integers from input and outputs non-negative integers in ascending order. Well, you could very simply create another list of non-negative and then sort. Okay? So this is using four. Um, it's going to basically add an element to the list or not, or you could use the same list and delete because you can change lists. And then just use sort because we can do that. Dictionaries. I know we're almost at 10 o'clock, so I will go through dictionaries as fast as I can unless you guys stop me and want me to go slower. I'm stuck on this one. My current code produces this output. Which one was that? I'm sorry, James. Filter and sort lists. Okay. So let's just, I'm not going to do this um, completely, but let's take a look at, okay. So um, what lab number was that? Lab 6.13. Okay, so let's just copy what they have here. Okay, so we'll do this real quick. Okay, so I'm just going to create a list of integers, okay? And we'll just use their input. Okay. I always remember to put commas. I just am not taking the time to do the input statement here. Okay. So the first thing they want us to do is they want to write a program that gets a list of integers from input. We're not going to worry about that part outputs non-negative integers in ascending order. So the first thing we have to do is get another list of non-negative integers. So we can do that in one of two ways. We can either use this list and delete anything that's negative, or we can create a new list. Well, let's just play with deleting, just because that's how I feel. Well, no, I don't want to delete from a list I'm looping over. So we're just going to create a new list. I'm going to say new list is that. I'm going to say for uh, for val in my list if val is greater than uh, non-negative integers are equal to zero, then I'm going to say new list dot append val. Okay? And then I'm going I should just be able to do print new list dot sort. Let's see what happens. Let's see if my 10 o'clock brain, it's not quite 10 o'clock, so my 
my 10 o'clock brain may not have kicked in yet. So let's see what happens. None. Well, that wasn't good. If val greater than or equal to zero, new list dot append val. For val and my list, remove redundant parentheses. Oh, writing Java again. Okay. Oh, well, let's see what happens. Debug it. Okay. So new list dot append val. So ten. That's right. Four. So new list is ten four three. New list dot sort. New list is there. None. Wow, well, how did I not use sort right? So let's go back and look at sort. Okay. New list dot sort. Sorts the items in the list in place. or sort customization see sorted for their exploited explanation. So Python list sort. All right. So we're going to do one thing. We're just going to back up a second. And I'm going to print just run this. Okay. So, I shouldn't have to do that. Nope. I don't know what sort is doing. So, did you use sort? Or did you try and sort on your own? 2, 4, 10, 12, and 39. I use sort in a for statement. Okay. I should just be able to do this. All right. There shouldn't be a none there. Okay. There we go. Are you saying that's not what you should have got? Or am I supposed to be sorting it in reverse order? In ascending order, lowest to highest. Lowest to highest. That should be correct. Is that not correct? No, I think that's correct. Given what they're talking about, 2, 4, 10, 12, and 39. Okay. So I think the issue might be if you're using the sort in the for statement. So and you can do a for in range. You could do either. You could do a for in range or you could just do in and then the list. Either is fine. Either will work appropriately. Um, the issue is when you're using the sort, and I believe that that answer is correct. So I'm going to head on to dictionary. <laughs> Sorry, this is taking so long. Dictionary is different than list. 
Dictionaries are, do not have an index value. Dictionaries have a key. It's called a key value pair. So you don't count things in dictionaries. You access, you access things in dictionaries using a key. So I'm go and, and dictionaries are great. Dictionaries, if you've ever heard of no SQL databases, they're all about dictionaries. Okay? Dictionaries allow you to give meaning to your values. With lists, it has a pre-assigned index and it has absolutely no meaning. One could, you know, the first element in the list could be your age, it could be your bank account information, it could be another list. You don't know what it is. Dictionaries allow you to assign meaning to the value. So, let's see, I sorted first, then went for the range, and then took out the negative numbers. Okay. Um, how, whatever order you do it in, as long as your output comes out, um, is fine. You can choose to use sort and then remove the negative numbers, or you can do what I did, which is remove the negative numbers and then sort. Uh, it would only, it really doesn't make that much of a difference from a processing standpoint. So, okay, back on, back on dictionaries. So that's what a dictionary is. It is a different form of a collection. So you don't have an index. You don't count through things, at least for the most part. And you have meaning. If you're ever looking at something, um, there, there's several there are format, data formats like JSON, which are very dictionary based. Okay. So I'm going to just shift gears here and I'm going to do a simple dictionary. Okay? Dictionaries are different than lists. I said that. I'm going to create a dictionary and I'm going to tell Python it's a dictionary and I'm going to do it by using the open and close curly brackets. The open and co close curly brackets just tell Python I've created a dictionary. It's a form of collection, and it's not a list. So what do I do in a dictionary? Well, the syntax is a bit different. I will have a key. Let's say my key is name. And I will have a colon, and then I will have a value. And let's say my value is Lisa. I just created a key value pair. Now, dictionaries can hold lots of key value pairs. So I can have age and 29, a long time ago. I can have, I don't know, date, and we'll just make it 42, whatever that, that is. So a dictionary doesn't look anything like a list, because remember, a list just had item, you know, value, comma, value, comma, value, comma. So how do I get it information from a list? Well, I get it information, or sorry, information in a dictionary. I get it, it through the key. Name is the key. Lisa is the value. Age is the key. 29 is the value. Date is the key. 42 is the value. So that's what I do. If I wanted to print the information in a dictionary, I could go print, and I would say text of name, and it would give me the value. And I could say print, text of age, and print, text of date. Okay, now you'll notice a few things here. Dict is the variable name, just like that. But my, my nomenclature here to get at that value for name is actually the square brackets. Sometimes this can trip people up 
because when you're creating a dictionary, you're using the curly brackets. But when you are accessing a piece of, of, when you're accessing the value from the key, you are using the open and close square brackets and the name of the key. So if I run this, I didn't change that, my bad. Okay, so if I run this, you will see that Lisa 29 and 42 came out because that's how I got at them. I just printed, I went to the variable dict and then I gave it the key and that key leads me to the value. Um, so they call it um, an indexing operation. So how do I add information to a dictionary? To add information to a dictionary, I would just go dict of info equals some more info and then if I print and we'll just do that here so what we'll see is here was just the information I created that was at line 8 I simply added a key called info and gave it a value and it showed up in the dictionary. That's all you have to do to add information to a dictionary. The only thing I have to do to change information in the dictionary is, let's say, age. And I will make that 39, also a long time ago. And then I'll print it again. Whoops, my bad, ignore what I just did. This is the after 10 o'clock co coding brain. It's really quite sad. My brain literally just shut off. Okay, so now we have this new print statement and I should have used the equal sign. All right, now I did it correct, I apologize. So here we have this new print statement and 39 is the value. So I just created, read, appended, modify, and I can also delete if I want to. So here are the methods on a dictionary. I can clear out everything in the dictionary. I can get uh, a value of the entry from the dictionary. I can update a dictionary. It merges, excuse me, I can merge one dictionary with another dictionary to make a brand new dictionary. And I can pop, which removes the key from the dictionary. So I can remove an element from the dictionary or delete an element from the dictionary by doing that. How do I iterate over a dictionary? Well, there's a for loop for that. So we know about the in operator. And for dictionaries, I can simply use for key in dictionary. Just like I could have done for value in a list. So let's look at that. I can say for key in dict print. Wait a minute, there we go. Format key dict of key. Okay, so all I'm doing here is I'm using a for loop, and this could be x. This is key is just a variable name. So Python gives me a for loop that lets me iterate over a dictionary. 
And it's just that simple. So here I'm doing the iteration, and it's name, age, date, and info because I added info here. So this is actually the most optimum way to get at information from a dictionary, especially if you don't know what the keys are. So let's see. Nesting. You can nest dictionaries in other dictionaries. And that becomes a very handy thing, especially when you have a game to write. So if I were writing a game and I had rooms and there were items to be kept in the room and there were directions to go, I could do something like this, okay? I could have something called rooms. Sorry. Actually, we're just going to new Python file. So I could have something called rooms. And let's say I have room one. Sorry. Yeah. I'm going to have room one. And room one can be gotten, sorry, if I'm in room one, I can go a couple of ways. Let's say I can go up, and when I go up, I go to room two, and I can go down, and when I go down, I go to room three. And when I am in room two, when I'm in room two, and I go, uh, whoops, R-O-O-M, not E, and I go, uh, whoops, up room two, my bad, and I go down, I go to room one, room one, mm, my bad, oops, wrong brackets, there we go. So I've just created a map in a dictionary. So right now I'm just going to have room one and room two, and from room one, if I go up, I go to room two. And if I go down, I'm going to go to room three. And from room T three, if I go down, I go back to room one. So how do I now know what's happening? So what I've created by using dictionaries inside dictionaries is I've created my map. So if you have your map, this is what you do for your game, OK? So let's just see what happens if I go and just iterate over this. So if I go for room in rooms, let's just print room. This is just a baby step example. Okay? So I'm just going to run this. And I have room one and room two. Well, let's see if there's anything in room one and room two. I know they're dictionaries, so I'm going to do for direction in room, okay, because I know that room is a dictionary, and I'm going to print direction. Actually, I'm going to print, yeah, let's just print direction. So, now I have, whoops, room one, what, four direction, ah, my bad, in, I did this earlier and I apologize, in rooms of room. So room is the key, and now I want to get rooms, ah, sorry, I made this, I made this a tongue twister. I want to get the room 
that's in my rooms dictionary. So now I have, whoops, print rooms of room. I don't want that. For direction in rooms of room. My bad again. See, this is what happens to my brain. Okay, so I have nested dictionaries. And so I, when I'm printing rooms of room, I have up is room two, down is room three. So the direction I have is up and down. And then for the next one, I have down. So if I want to then find out what the room is for down, I can simply say, when I move, I go go to Okay. So I go to Rome. Let's see what happens. No, nope. what did I do wrong? Oh, my bad. Okay. So, what I have here is I've just given meaning to all of that. I say when I move up, I go to room one. So, when I move, let's give it a little bit more meaning, from... So uh, when I move up from so when I move up from oh my bad there we go when I move up wait a minute room. Oh, my bad. Sorry about this. I'm being confusing. But I think you get the point of what I'm trying to do here. So what I'm trying to do, um, let's just go back to that one. What I'm trying to do here is I am trying to show you how to use your map to come up with a map that's in Python, because that's really what we're doing. And with the essence of this dictionary stuff, when you're thinking about your project, this is what you need to do, and this is what you will need to do to move rooms. Because if I am already in room one, let's just assume I'm in room one. I'm going to comment this out for right now. Yes. I will check the video tomorrow for the rest of this is part I have been stuck on. Uh, sorry, you have to go, Steve. So if I am in a room, all right, I'm just going to comment this out. Now, by the way, this is not, this is just kind of an introduction to what you have to do, but this is not the whole solution. So if I am in a room, let's say I have current room is room one, whoops, and my movement is down, where do I end up? Well, let's see. So if I am in room one, so I, if I have rooms of current, I get a series of movements. So if I have rooms of current, I'm going to get, um, let's see, just call it where. Don't have good names tonight. And then from where, if I have the move, so I would be where of move, would get me to where I am, where the next place is, where my new room is.
So let's just do this for a second. So I'm here and you will see that I have my dictionary and my current room is going to be room one. Okay. My movement is going to be down and I know that I can move down from room one. So this would have to be something you would have to check to make sure it's valid. So there's a validity check in your code that you're going to have to do. But for right now, this is a good first step. And then where, now you will see where is up room two, down room three, and that's exactly what I get from room one. So I used my current room called room one, and that got me to this. Now, I want to move. So my new room is going to be where I moved from. So this is my direction. I should have just called it direction. I'll rename it. My direction is down. So my new room uh, is going to be room three, which is where my map is. So that is how I got from room one to room three by going down. Does this make sense? I'm hoping it does. Whoops. I'm hoping it makes sense. It's meant to kind of help guide you from your map to your project. And I'm trying to take the issues, okay, I'm trying to take what we're doing here in each of the different modules and providing you with information on how to apply that. Oh, sorry, there's a bug in here. Sorry. How to apply that to what you're doing. And so this is what nested dictionaries do, and this is where you need to go in terms of your project. You need to create a dictionary of rooms, and each of those rooms, you have directions. And then what happens from those directions? So start with the first two rooms and test it. And then add two more rooms and test it. And add another room and test it. And your tested code won't necessarily be your uh, final code, but you can start here. Okay? So let's see. Uh, word frequencies. So this is um, a list of words and then the program outputs those words and their frequencies. So this is a list issue and remember for lists we had this count. So my guess is you should take a, 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 list, a, a look at the count function for lists because it returns the number of times X appears in the list. So I would, for, for lab 6.18, I would definitely look at the count function from Python. Replacement words, okay? So if you're just going to replace words in a sentence, so the input begins with word replacement pairs, original and replacement, um, and then you're going to put them somewhere in a sentence. So you're going to have automobile and car, manufacturer and maker, children and kids. So the automobile manufacturer recommends car seats for children if the automobile doesn't already have one. And this is the car maker recommends car seats for kids if the car doesn't already have one. So you can assume uniqueness and this is basically just uh, a dictionary. So you can, uh, sorry, no, it, is this a dictionary or a list? My bad. Um, yeah, this is a dictionary. So you have automobile is the key and car is the word, manufacturer is key, maker is the word, children is key, kids is the word, and you just run through that dictionary and, mo and replace the words. So those are the two labs 
Um, and I'm sorry we went over. Is there? Any, does anybody have any questions before we end for the evening? And I will hopefully have this up tomorrow along with the scripts. Okie dokie. Um, I'm going to call it then for tonight. I'm glad you're good, Rachel. Or sorry, Rochelle. Um, so I hope everybody has a good evening. Thanks for hanging around. And I hope to have this up tomorrow on YouTube. Um, and so I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to stop recording. And